Hi everyone, it's Dragana from Sasebo. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to show you what I've been doing with my eco prints, especially the ones with fabric. So this is going to be part four of the easiest eco printing technique ever. Of course, what you do with them, it's totally up to you. If you do lots of small ones, you can join them together and make a quilt or cushion cases or pillowcases would look lovely. But I'm into junk journals, so I like to use them for my junk journal covers. I've also decided to frame one of them. Maybe I'll frame a few other, but the one that I really, really loved from the start is this one. Well, I'll turn off the light. I think it's easier to see now. And this is just an ordinary picture frame, one that you can assemble together and as you can see i've done it upside down i can't even hang it on the wall the hook is here so i have to take it apart and do it again but it was just a simple technique i used this fabric cut it to size and i just placed that on top i didn't even use the glue there was no need for it once you put the glass on top it just stayed like that and i just wanted to have this one on my wall in my studio somewhere just to remind me and also to preserve it because I might be tempted to cut it up and use it somewhere else. And I really love it. So that one didn't need any protection of the surface. It's got glass, so that's fine. If you decide to make a quilt, of course, you know, you don't want to put any chemicals on top. You will probably use it as it is. And that is what I've done here. As you can see, these are just journal covers that were not finished. And I've played a little bit with some lace and some fabrics and I placed those eco prints on top. This one went really well with the orange here and that one was more yellow so I chose that fabric. And I didn't do anything to these prints apart from those mordants that we've done in part three of this video. I washed them in liquid soap, the one that's meant for hands which is pH neutral. So nothing else has been done to these prints. And I think they're going to be all right like that. Although the fabric that I use is really thin. So over here, I don't know if that comes up in the video, but the parts of the lace and other bits, you can actually feel them underneath the print because the fabric is really thin. All right. So I try to do this one by adding interfacing this. The one that you iron on and i think you can tell that it's a bit thicker it's whiter these areas are kind of whiter than here over here you can see this fabric showing a little bit underneath if your fabric is thin just add something underneath either iron on interfacing or an extra piece of fabric in white, maybe some fleece, perhaps. Because these are smaller pieces that are attached to a cover that has tougher upholstery fabric, I don't really need to worry that it's going to tear or damage. It's just a decoration on top of the journal. If I was to do a whole journal, like everything with that fabric eco print, I would definitely try to protect it because when you have lots of folds like here and here and it's handled a lot and touched these can get damaged they can get stained and in that case i would suggest protect the surface with something and that's what i want to talk to you about just quickly i want to show you some of the tests that i've done and I'll tell you my findings and it's up to you what you decide to use. And then I thought we'll make one journal cover really quickly with one of my prints. And the first one I tested was this one. First I glued it on the cardboard with a glue stick to have nice edges. And then I used clear gesso. This is gesso that dries clear. It's kind of white, but when it dries, it doesn't stay white, it goes clear. Right, you can use any brand, it protects the surface and it allows you to do even more paint work on top if you wanted to. And it turned the whole thing basically into almost like a painting canvas. It primed the surface, but one thing I didn't like 
in a few areas i don't know if you can see this there's a bubble here it lifted off there's one here as well but it's gone now so this glue obviously did not do the job properly or I forgot to put it in some places so it wasn't really glued properly and then when I added gesso it lifted off. I wouldn't use glue stick again to do this. I would use proper glue, white glue. Anyway, the, the gesso gave me this rough surface. It became really rough and listen to this. Like I said, almost like painting canvas, but I can be sure now that it's protected. After I gessoed it, I used some ink around the edges because I wanted it to look antique and old. And this can now go on top of a journal like this. It would look nice on that one as well. So that's my finding with the clear gesso. It works really well. It protects the surface. But clear gesso can be a little bit expensive and it's not that easy to find, at least where I live. The next one I tried was Acryl Gel Matte. Okay, and I didn't glue it on the cardstock. I just stretched it on the piece of cardboard with pins. You have to kind of fix it with something, otherwise the, the fabric moves as you apply these things so it's not glued nothing on this side it stayed like fabric and it created like a it created a surface on this side which is almost identical to the clear gesso perhaps a little bit rougher okay if you have acryl gel mat it's a way to go why not it does become really tough but it's also it's not gonna crack it's again almost like painting canvas and then you can add more on top this would make a really cute little journal wouldn't it yeah so acryl gel mat you can do the gloss one as well as suppose. then after that i tried using this one i had this one in my stash forever and I didn't really use it and I can't remember why I bought it in the first place but I thought since I'm working with fabric I might as well try using it on top of this it's meant to help paint adhere to fabric if you are using acrylic paints and you want to use them on fabric you add the textile medium and then you set it I think heat set it with an iron or something so I tried using it on this First, I stretched it again. I think I used glue stick here too. And then I painted it with this. And I really like the result. It's kind of, it's not coarse. It's still the same as it was like in fabric, but it seems tougher and it seems clearer and a bit thicker. So overall, I like the result. It didn't change the texture of the print. Okay, and I tried it here as well and here too. So, yeah, although this was a different fabric, this was cotton, like the one you use for your bed sheets, and this one was like a terry cotton, a bit fluffy, a fluffy cotton. And it didn't stay so soft it went a little bit more firm so these were done with textile medium this one was glued with that and these two were glued with decoupage glue okay so i decoupaged on the piece of cardstock and then i used textile medium on top on those two and the last one i've done was just with the decoupage glue which is basically a white glue that is a little bit runnier than the regular white glue so you can use just the craft white glue with a little bit of water and i didn't glue it onto the cardboard i just stretched it here and applied the glue and it worked just fine it is a little bit kind of i can't explain it's not as soft 
as it was here it's more almost like wax feel to it hard to explain but again the glue acted the same way as any of the other things that i've shown you it's kind of protective of the surface so i'll just quickly show you i don't know which one maybe the one with the glue i'll just show you how to do it and then we can make a journal cover so i have two pieces of recycled cardstock and i have this print i'll just cut it in half this one will glue onto that and maybe this one you could just do directly here just take some cardboard get a few pins or something you can even use the tape or you don't have to use anything but it's gonna be difficult i could tell you now because fabric tends to stick to the brush <laughs> okay so you just apply the glue It's similar process to when you decoupage napkins. And then you glue that You can also cut the corners here, just like when you're doing a cover. My brush was a little bit uh, wet. I cleaned it and now it made the glue even runnier than it should be. But that's alright, it's just going to take longer to dry. Keep sticking to my fingers. <laughs> anyway, that's why I prefer doing this way. The glue stick, although this gives better results. All right, then you turn it onto this side, and then you apply. Just apply the glue on top and it should seal it. Now I haven't really tried with, for example, with varnishes because I feel that varnishes might give more like a brittle effect and fabric is supposed to stay flexible. Okay, all right, so that is that. And here it is just the same. You simply apply the glue. You can go all the way to the edges or you can just go close to the edges. It's up to you, depending on how you intend to use this. If you go all the way to the edges, your fabric will stop fraying. This is like priming the canvas when you want to paint, basically. I remember in art school, we always used to prime the, the fabric or the cotton or the linen with a glue before we would add gesso. All right, now let's quickly make 
burnt journal cover i just really want to make one i really want to have this print on the front of my journal and to go along with all that eco printing thing i thought i might as well use the fabric that i've dyed using eco printing boiling method last year i think i have a video on how i've done that i will link it down below and i want to have this on the front of the cover because i really want to have this showing i don't want to cover it and this part here wasn't the best apart from that and i think if i put that it should be all right and i like to use this carpet underlay i mentioned this in several of my videos where i make covers it's a little bit sticky and i like to add that because this fabric is not upholstery fabric again it's cotton it's quite thin and i like to have a little bit of you know thickness to my fabric if you have something like um what's the name of it i keep forgetting i think in the u.s you can get that one that you can iron on i've forgotten the name never mind and for the structure i'm going to use this paper bag but it will have to be a little bit bigger and for the inside i'm going to use either this avocado dyed fabric or this one also avocado dyed but i think i've added something else to it possibly iron so it turned more purple rather than pink so one or the other i'll decide that later on first thing i have to do is take apart this bag i don't need it this big i'll cut it about here just draw a line to make for myself okay. and I don't need these so I'll take these out and then I'll have to glue it all together I will leave that like that here and here to give a more stability okay let's quickly take these out all right first I'm going to glue these Sides. I'm just using glue stick. I'm going to glue first and then cut later, it's just easier like that. I could possibly glue these together, but I'm not going to. I'm going to let it be squishy. I'm just going to cut here. Just glue the edges so they don't open up. It's just easier to work with. But the middle is unglued. That is the structure of my journal now. I'm going to place it on one side. I need to trim it a little bit. Yeah, just a tiny little bit. It needs to be a little bit smaller than the paper bag, like a couple of millimeters. All right. So this is going to be on the outside outer part of the cover and I said I want to have as much of this visible 
see. Something like that. I think I'll put it like this from this side. Okay. Yeah. I have enough to go over. And then here I can cut this part like there. And I'm going to make closures with the the rest. I'll just do this. I'm not going to glue this fabric here. This is kind of sticky and it's okay that it stays like that. I'm just pushing it out so there's no air bubbles. But now I have to I have to do the edges from this side. And I'm thinking because this fabric is thin, I'm not gonna cut this at all. I'm going to glue it like this. I'm gonna use this Aston based glue because it dries fast. I'm gonna get my silk and brush, so I'm just going to put like a little bit here. I have one nature theme journal that I started, but I've already kind of decided what I want inside. So I need to make another one for all my botanical prints. <laughs> yeah. That other journal I just mentioned was supposed to be the journal that I'm going to work on for this whole month. And then my plans have changed drastically. And I have another Sizzix hack to do with these um, leaf prints. And I can't wait to share it with you. I think you're gonna like that one too. I love it. Honestly, this morning, I thought, should I do that one or this one? And yeah, in the end I decided to do this. I'm so happy that our Facebook group has almost 200 members. I didn't check this morning, but yesterday it was close to 200. Perhaps it's even more by now. That is so great. And I've seen some really cool stuff. Oh my gosh, you guys are so talented. It's really, really good. I love it. Yes, I created a digital kit with all my eco prints. I used the ones that I've done on paper and I picked 20 of my favorites. And I'm going to show you later on uh, what they look like. And the reason I've done it is because every time I go and want to cut up one of my eco prints I get really ugh, I cringe it's like I can't I, I can't do it but um, now that they're all like scanned and digitized and you know I can print them again I feel more comfortable using the originals 
I don't know. Do you get like that? I get like that. And I know I can always print more, but you know, if there's one that you really like, <laughs> you just don't want it to be destroyed or cut up. All right, so that is the front. I have the edges like this. If you can see, they're like a little bit not rounded, but yeah, this one's probably a little bit thinner. So I'll just. Yes, something different. They don't have to be always pointy. And yeah. So that is going to be the outside. All right. Something like that. I know it doesn't look like anything at the moment, but it's going to look good. Believe me. All right. I'm going to glue this immediately because it's one thing. I tend to forget. Oops. So I'm finding the middle here. That is the middle. And that is the middle. And I'm just going to glue that now. Before I do anything to the insides, I think I want to attach this and I'm going to attach it with the sewing machine. So that is going to be my journal and it's going to have just one signature. So I have to find the middle here, okay? And the middle is there. I'm going to just put a piece of paper. because I don't want to fold it yet. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to put that properly. I want to see what it looks like. So I'm going to move it just a little bit more to this side because when you have a fold here and you'll have at least one signature, it will have to have a little bit of thickness. So if I put it too close here, it's not going to be good. So I'm just moving it slightly towards this and I think that looks all right something like that I'm just going to attach this with the sewing machine okay I'll do that quickly and now we'll be back I'm kind of happy how that looks now now let's see what we have here I have to decide what sort of fabric I want and I want some of that fabric to show on this side all right so do i want this color or do i want the pink color Might be really unusual combination in this case. So I don't know. Perhaps this lighter color. I said I want to have like a fringe edge around a little bit. That means I have to cut this fabric. I'm going to tear about from here. And that side. From here. Right. Cool. So that 
side is going to go there. Now again, this fabric is a little bit thin, but I don't want to put the, the, the thick one. Maybe I'll just use this interfacing. Okay, I cut a piece. And again, this piece will have to be a bit smaller because I don't want it to show. So I'm just going to cut it. So now I need to iron on this onto that fabric. So this is the wrong side. The wizard it doesn't really matter. So I need to iron on this to that. Okay, I'll be back in a second. I have glued that to the back. And then I'm just going to actually apply a little bit of glue stick here. Right. Because I don't want it to move when I take it to the sewing machine. Just where the paper is. Okay. I think it's easier if I do it this way. I'll put that down. And I'm going to turn that. Kind of hard to do with the sitting down. <laughs> All right, I'll start with this. Right. Make sure there's enough showing on all sides. it looks all right all right so one more step is take this to the sewing machine and do a close stitch or zigzag stitch wherever you like all the way around all right here it is i have to say i really had trouble with my sewing machine today i changed the needle only yesterday and I must have done something wrong or I put put it the wrong way <laughs> just the thread kept breaking anyway I managed to complete it somehow it's not the best but it's done so all I need to do now is just fold this gently this is going to be like almost like a soft color journal I love it it's going to be really tall journal and I'm going to just put two eyelets and it's going to be one of those elastic bindings will be here okay. I'm gonna have to 
use the crocodile to make the hole. just enough of this so I'll just do one obviously this is going to be just one almost like one signature and I want to put some of my eco prints inside and this is just enough I have an option of having that on the outside some charms or I can just have it on the inside like that which is just fine now let's put some of the prints inside can you believe I made this many obviously I can't fit them all inside but I just thought I'll pick my favorites I still have too many okay I don't know if I can fit that many no I think I went through my prints like five times trying to decide the absolute favorite is a nightmare <laughs> so I think I'm down to 15 or something and the thing is they don't have both sides pretty I could either glue them like this one to another and have that as one or just not worry about it for now just put them in like this and I also have to trim those at some stage. So, yeah, some are bigger, some are smaller, depending on the papers I've used. So, I'll see how I go. I'll just put them as they are for now. And then later on, I can decide how to actually display them. Alright. Let's have a look. Yeah. That's alright like that, I think. Okay. <laughs> so here are some that I've decided to keep. Alright. I'm going to be hoarding them, I think, for years. I don't know. Maybe if I decide to use them in some other journals, I won't bind these. I'll be able to just take them out and use them. And I don't have to decide on this right now. I can wait. I love how that one turned out. Yep. Yeah, and these are the other sides. And, of course, I have, have to figure out what to do on these here. Like I said, perhaps I can glue two together with back to back. That might be one way of doing it. I'll think about it. Anyway, that's the ones I've decided to keep. And I think they just look good in this journal. Now I just want to quickly show you my digital. Here it is. Botanical collection. It has 10 pages with two prints each. Two of my favorites. 
So 20 of my favorites actually inside. And I sort of layer them on top of coffee stained papers and some faint script. And I included scientific name for all the plants. And I think they would look really nice in a journal. I'm going to be using these a lot. And it takes the pressure of using originals, for me anyway. Because now I know I've preserved them in a way that I can reprint whenever I want. And I really like them. Okay. I'm working on two more um, digital kits inspired by all of this, but I just haven't had the time to complete everything. And all my other videos are now in line. <laughs> but that's all right. We have to make the most of the leaves while they're still here. We'll have the rest of the winter to uh, play with other things. But yeah. This is what's happening now, so we might as well just embrace it. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I think with this one, I conclude this series. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope I see you soon in my next video. Bye for now.